Okay, I'd like to call to order the February 17th, 2015 City of Statesboro City Council meeting. I would like to ask uh, Councilman Gary Lewis to please lead us in our invocation and pledge of allegiance. Let us pray, please. Gracious Father, we come to you today asking you to lead us, guide us, and have us to make the right decisions. Father, somebody here tonight needs to be heard. Let this City Council open our ears and our hearts to those who here tonight that trust in us to do the right thing. Father, we know that you have all power in your hand, and we know that you will destroy and you will defend. Heavenly Father, we ask you to watch, it, watch over those who are abroad that's protecting this, company, this country. Father, we ask you to watch over those tonight, our police officers, all this law enforcement. Father, we just want to thank you. Thank you for those who are here tonight that need to be heard. Again, I say, lead us the right way and teach us, Father, that finance is not always the right way, but our hearts and our minds need to be shown tonight to those who trust in us and all these blessings that we ask in your Son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Item three, Ms. Do we have anybody that's asked to make a public comment this evening? Okay. We'll move on to agenda item four, which is a consideration of a motion to approve the consent agenda. I will ask council to please review the consent agenda and someone to give us a motion to approve it. I make a motion we approve the consent agenda. Do I have a second? Okay. Do I have any discussion? All in favor, please state by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Agenda item five, which I'm a little bit tickled about this one, is a second reading and consideration of a motion to approve ordinance 2015-01, an ordinance amending certain sections of chapter two, section 2-1 two of the Statesboro Code of Ordinances, which is going to move our meeting time from 5.15 to 5.30. That was Councilman Boyum's suggestion. He cannot be here till 5.30. So, he isn't here to vote for his motion. But anyway, uh, Robert, what would you like to say about that? I don't really have much to add. That'll be the second meeting, second council meeting of each month. It would just be simply changing it from 5.15 to 5.30, and that would start in March, if, if approved. If approved. Okay, do I have a motion to approve ordinance 2015-01? Motion to approve ordinance 2015-01. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Item number six is a consideration of a motion to approve resolution 2015-07. Resolution 2015-07 is a motion that was suggested by Councilman Riggs, which denies zoning application RZ 15-10-01 to amend the zoning map of the city of Statesboro. This would deny the variance request of RZ 141001 and application B 1410-02. Again, put forth by Councilman Riggs. Do I have a motion to approve resolution 2015-07? I make a motion to approve resolution 2015-07. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Um, I'd like to make a comment if I could. Uh, Daughter Benson and Daughter Kitchens, uh, I will do anything in my possible power to help you uh, help us all find a suitable, suitable something for that uh, property. I just hope that y'all can understand that uh, we just don't feel that the end mark is uh, is the right place for it. Um, but he, but I put myself and uh, and the city city staff at that in in whole uh, at your disposal to help. Uh, help you uh, find a suitable use for that. 
And uh, if uh, the Enmark man was here, I would offer him the same thing. I'd like to see what he's proposing. It's, uh, I think it's a fantastic concept, and it would be great in this city, just not across from uh, Woodlawn Southern Beach. You're welcome. That's it. Thank you. Do you have any further discussion? All in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Please note on your agenda that agenda item seven has been pulled from tonight's agenda at the request of the applicant and will be put back on the agenda at their request at a uh, meeting down the road, another meeting. Agenda item 8A and 8B have also been pulled at the request of the applicant and will be placed back on a future agenda at the request of the applicant. So we're going to move down to agenda item 9. Agenda item 9 is a public hearing and consideration of a motion to approve application RZ 1501-01. Do I have a motion to open the public hearing regarding application RZ 1501-01? Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please state by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? The public hearing is now open. I'm going to ask Mandy to introduce this item to the public hearing. Thank you, Mayor. This is a lot known as 15 East Grady Street. It is 0.29 acres in size. The application is to rezone from highway oriented commercial to R4 um, residential. This is a uh, single family lot, or really, it was been used as a single family lot until 2010 when the structure on the site was destroyed by fire. Um, this is right adjacent to Martin Rule um, Architects across the street from the library if that helps kind of position everyone's mindset. Mr. Gross is asking to rezone this property so that he can develop um, two uh, duplexes on the site. It's a very attractive site plan. We have reviewed the site plan through Right Start and also through, through some meetings with the Downtown Development Authority. We've reviewed his request to rezone um, under several different perspectives in the analysis. It is in the urban core character area or the downtown character area under our comprehensive plan. It's also in the DSDA master plan um, in a zone that the DSDA um, redevelopment plan targets for residential and infill development and mixed use development. And it's also in the TAD redevelopment plan, which, is incur which encourages, encourages excuse me, redevelopment um, in areas such as this that have been uh, either empty or in need of some restructuring. We, from those particular perspectives, there was a recommendation to approve the rezoning. The R4 is a bit of a question, I, I want to address that. That technically is a high density uh, zoning, but it does permit lower uses and lower density zonings. This is the only zoning that we have that would allow for two rooftops on the structure and allow those rooftops to share common ownership. The size being at 0.29 acres um, of the lot would only house these two rooftops. There's not room for additional structures on the site. And it, at that lot size, actually it could not be developed in conformity with the HOC zoning regulations, which was another um, reason to recommend approval of the zoning. That being said, uh, we also examined whether or not this raised the question of spot zoning. There are a lot of uh, zones around this particular area, none of which are, um, well some are R4, but this has some other zones around it. And what was not able to find any zoning history on this particular site. That indicates to me that the HOC zoning is probably original to the site from the late 70s. Um, and the, the rule with spot zoning is if you're pulling a site out and you're zoning it something different than its immediate surrounding zone, you should ask that question. Are we taking this, this particular parcel out of the general scheme of zoning in your comprehensive plan for the more for the benefit of the private property owner rather than the public at large. Um, and some, if the answer to that is yes, then you need to stop and, and think about that. However, if the answer is yes, but we're doing it because this particular area is in transition and the needs of the area no longer reflect the zoning uh, because the, the area has changed or is changing, 
and we need to go to this new zoning de designation in order to meet today's needs or the projected needs of the community as defined by the comp plan or other land use plans that you have, then it doesn't necessarily raise the legal issue of spot zoning or you could overcome that issue. So for all of those reasons, the redevelopment plan for the TAB, the downtown um, character area and the comp plan, and also the um, DSDA master plan and its recommendations and the zoning for HSC not fitting this, this, this particular area any longer. The staff recommended that this uh, lot be rezoned to R4 to allow for the proposed construction on the site. We made that recommendation last week to the Planning Commission and they joined us unanimously in that recommendation to you all tonight. With that I'll be happy to take any questions that you may have. Was there any um uh, feedback from Martin Rule? No, ma'am, not that I received. Okay. Is anybody here to speak in favor? Good evening, Mayor and City Council. I'm John Dobson with the firm Matt Soretti, representing Alan Gross tonight. As usual, Mandy covered uh, in her remarks just about everything that needs to be said. Uh, Mr. Gross is asking to do a two duplexes. We have been to, through the right start meeting uh, with the city staff and Mr. Muldrew. Um, of the uh, suggestions that they made were taken into account, and we would ask for your support tonight. Um, Mr. Gross is in the audience. If you have uh, questions that I can't answer, we'll be glad to do so. Thank you for your consideration. Anybody to speak against this zoning request? Anybody speak against? Anybody else to speak for the request? Yes, sir, Mr. Davis. Uh, my name is Brian Davis I'm with Henley Properties. Um, we have invested a good bit on um, East Grady Street with the hopes of attracting other investors to come downtown. Uh, this is exactly what we hoped would happen. Um, this lot has been sitting there vacant after um, a building has burned down. So to me, there cannot be any better use than to us attract more residents downtown, especially new construction, which is which is the most desirable to um, incoming tenants right now. So we strongly encourage you to, to think about this and consider it and definitely bring it down there because we only think it's going to be a stronger attribute to the to the street in the area, so we hope that you consider approving it. So let me ask you something. Uh, Y'all have a number of units downtown. What is the demand? So right now, um, this next year, we will have a total of 75, and it looks like we will be finished leasing all 75 of them in the next two weeks. The 75 bedrooms or 75, 75 units? units. Mm -hmm. So the demand is, is pretty large and substantial, and it's not really from an undergraduate level, it's mostly graduate school students, professionals, um, so that's the group that mostly is coming in right now. Thanks. Mandy, uh, looking at the, I guess it's page 70 or so in our packet, if you, if you look at the line of drawing, maybe like the next one or so, so there's Parking spaces, I guess a couple of questions. How many bedrooms for two units, the two bedrooms per side? There, there are eight bedrooms. There are four units per and a total of four bedrooms on the lot. Four bedrooms total on the lot are being proposed. Okay, so they're one bedroom they're one bedroom duplexes? Yes. Okay. Well, that was the first question. All right. The second thing is so if you look at the back door of them or the front door or anywhere, it just it just looks like a 90% of them is paved or are covered with a building. Am I looking at it wrong? When you, from the back of the building in the front, it's just, it's, just, it's very paved. Right, it's, it's either a 1,355 square foot building or a lot of, of a parking area. I'm just, I'm just thinking through it. See, you know, Brian set up, yeah, or, or, or whatever we do. Brian set up and, Brian, you got a lot of grass. You walk out the back door, there's grass. This, this, you got some other stuff to grass. This does as well. There's a pretty good bit of room between the back of the building and the property line to the west. Okay. What you see the dotted line is on there is the building setback line. So okay. 
So going from there is 10 feet, and so I guess it's probably another 12 or 13 back. So that's 22 plus or something. 20 foot from the back of the building to the property. Okay. And then nothing in the front though. So it's pretty much a sidewalk and the sidewalk in the parking. You have a grass strip between the edge of the parking lot and Echoes Martin Road where those um, Lehman Cypress or whatever the streets are that are planted around. This would be subject to the tree ordinance as well. So they'd have to have the green, the, the point necessary in the tree ordinance for this to actually okay. be approved. I think this is just a rough concept. Gotcha. Well, I just, and I, I, I guess on a rezone, I, I'm concerned about rough concepts. Um, uh, so I guess that, so Mandy, what would this look like tree wise or? I mean, let's not, I mean, I'm looking at this wrong and it's gonna look, I mean, right now it's four, it's three squares. Two buildings and a parking lot. It's pretty boring. I'm not saying I don't want just a vacant lot, but a vacant lot is prettier than this right now. So I'm just trying to see what exactly we're gonna do and what are we gonna do to make it look, well, you know, what what kind of would it look like? Excuse me, my name? Sure, so I'll wait introduce myself also. My name is Alan Gross, this is the property I'm proposing. Um, to make this economically feasible, which I know doesn't figure into your decision, but it does to mine, uh, the only way I can make the numbers make sense is to have two units on it. So what you see are two freestanding units, six feet of space between the two units, which um, corresponds to correct zoning. Um, my idea that I've uh, proposed to uh, Mandy and also uh, Alan Muldrew, you have two trees, uh, standing in between the units at each grading. Those are inside of the 10 feet setback line, so there's no reason that those have to go anywhere. You still have the grass within the 10 feet uh, setback line. And as uh, John mentioned, a considerable amount of grass across the uh, back. My idea was to have fir trees along the uh, rear, separating myself from um, the uh, web, I guess it's a leasing agency next door. So uh, the idea about it making, you know, uh, about the property making uh, sense as far as the aesthetic point has, has, has been going through. Um, there's a limited amount of space to be had on the property to begin with uh, to have the two units and you want a, a substantial amount of parking to be able to, to carry over in case it is two people living in a one bedroom as opposed to just one. So we have nine feet. Uh, I don't think we want to cut back too much from that. Um, I've spoken with uh, Alan Muldrew about the idea of putting up lattice work along the side that would face Grady and uh, having a vine, maybe a rose or a honeysuckle to, to move forward on that. As far as the plan being spec at this point, it isn't. This is the plan that I want to go forward with. Uh, and this is the plan that uh, I also have the uh, the drawings set up for uh, for the uh, for the floor plan. As 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 far as what Martin and Rue might consider, they drew up the plan, and they're all for it. Did um was there? Yeah. Is it just simply you don't have enough room across the front for those units to face the street and parking in the back? Correct. Um, John and I work through a number of iterations on this, and this is really the only way that it makes sense to have two units fit. What's the buffer going to be between the back of those units and the house adjoining next door? Total feet? Now what are you going to, are you going to use any, you propose for a buffer? Or trees. Our trees will go across the line between you and Webb? Yes. That's what you're saying? Okay. Yes. Across the line between myself and Webb and um, uh, down the back as well. Lattice work covering up the side of the house on Grady. 
What do you think? It wouldn't, it wouldn't cover the entire structure. Right. But, but a, a small piece of it. Yeah. And you still have the two trees that are existing there as well. So it's not you know, a bare lot. Mandy, what are our rules on the construction of, the, of these two? What, what, can he, what can he use to construct them and what can he not? As far as materials, materials. we don't have a rule that governs that count. They'll be brick. Very similar to the Henley properties across the street. Any further questions or discussion from council? Uh, Mandy, by zoning uh, going to R4, I've had a scroll through. Are there stipulations that this is what this is what's to be built? We need to write that. We need to add that in. But it's four bedrooms, one story, and brick. Uh, we would need to write those in. The, the zoning ordinance on its face would not govern those particular issues that you just raised. You okay with that adding it in? No problem whatsoever. Mm -hmm. The reason why the, the board's made decisions before, and then three days later, someone else owns it. Well, now it's already done. I'm sure. So we're like, okay, great. So. so, to be specific, it's four units, two buildings, four units, four bedrooms. Four total doors. Each door has a bedroom and a bath. So, 
four bedrooms. Two separate structures. Yes. Okay. And the structure would be brick. Of course, that brick. What color? No idea. <laughs> <laughs> what fountain? First fountain. <laughs> I'm not the best builder, but it does not make more sense to build a two-story structure with four bedrooms in the same one. It just didn't work out. Not with the numbers that I ran. No. They're going to go I want to ask one more thing about the setback from Grady Street. Is that the minimum setback? 20 feet is the yes, minimum. Yes, and that's the minimum setback. So we're setback. sitting at the minimum setback as well. That's that is the minimum setback on the ordinance is 20 Okay. Feet. And how many parking spots were there? Nine. Nine. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've had six. Is somebody gets some extra. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, what did you say, Mandy? Six parking spaces are required by the ordinance. But there's nine listed and in the There's nine there, and that's fine. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And if I don't have anything further from council, I'll make a motion. Do we have anything further from council? Okay, do I have a motion to approve application RZ 1501-01? Okay, close it first. Uh, yeah. Well, do you have a motion to close the public hearing? Motion to close the public hearing. We have a second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, hearing closed. Now do I have a consideration of a motion to approve application RZ 1501-01? Motion With the contingencies. Uh, you want to add a motion to approve application RC 1501 to build two buildings, one story tall, containing two bedrooms each, with brick on all four faces. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. Agenda item 10. Consideration of a motion to approve the proposed Police Department Patrol Bureau reorganization to dissolve two patrol lieutenants and add three new patrol officers and one part-time secretary position to elect return. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. I uh, brought this up at the last uh, council meeting, and I have in your packet a memo that describes in detail uh, what exactly the, the uh, Patrol Bureau is trying to do. And basically, if you'll look at the, uh, in your packet, there's a uh, Councilman Riggs, he's like me, he sees more with the picture than anything. And uh, you'll see in your packet, there's a proposed organizational chart from the Patrol Bureau. If you'll pull that out, you'll actually see it's pretty simple what, uh, what the police department is trying to accomplish. Um, is they want to dissolve two Patrol Bureau lieutenants positions within that patrol bureau right now there's four shifts and each shift has a lieutenant each shift has a sergeant each shift has a cor uh, corporal and each shift has several officers of work up underneath that shift and we've had these two uh, patrol lieutenants positions posted within the organization as for policy and we had no takers uh, and that's the first time that I know of in my 21 22 year history in the agency that we've had no takers or patrol lieutenant position. And in speaking with some of those candidates, uh, I personally spoke with some of them and the, the main concern was pay compression. Uh, the majority of those, um, I spoke to two, they were both sergeants. One was a detective sergeant, the other one was a patrol sergeant. And uh, we were look, looking for those guys to come up as leaders within the Bureau and that patrol Bureau. And, they did not want to take the position. It was, it was um, the sergeant in the PD, when you go from sergeant to lieutenant, that's your first step going from hourly to salary. And uh, even though it's a, uh, an 18 as a sergeant, when you go to lieutenant, it's a 21. And over the years, I believe the pay compression has gotten much worse and it's starting to cause some of these things. If you'll remember uh, with the fire department, we had some of these similar concerns last year. Um, their problem was a lot more pronounced and became a lot uh, to to our um, to our notice a lot sooner because their uh, their pay was a lot uh, a lot closer. And um, the police department is now just starting to realize some of these same problems. 
and I would dare say that you're probably going to see a lot of this citywide um, with some other other departments but um, I'll give credit where credit is, is due uh, Captain Forney the newly pr promoted patrol bureau captain um, came up with this idea initially and uh, the staff at the police department vetted it they uh, they pr they proposed it to me um, they sat down and explained what they wanted to do and why and uh, with the help of uh, Cindy in the finance department there's a spreadsheet that you'll that you see in your packet that shows exactly what the dollar savings are when you dissolve these two patrol lieutenants positions there was also some pay savings between two positions we had somebody leave we promoted somebody within uh, wound up saving um, enough money I believe it was a little over hundred and seventy eight thousand dollars and we added three new line level patrol officer positions and a part-time uh, community relations secretary that will serve the community relations unit and I'll also serve the accreditations uh, person that we have now which would be a big help it's a 29 hour a week part-time secretary position uh, all in all it's uh, the move is going to give us net one in our patrol bureau and um, that will bring our uh, our current needs assessment down from 11 and our patrol bureau to 10 which is which is really good and it's uh, still saving our budget a little over $7,100 in in our personnel costs with doing this move so uh, I am totally uh, okay with it um, span of control for police officer shifts is about seven I mean you work from six to eight I use seven and uh, we still have plenty of supervision on these shifts and we'll have a sergeant and a corporal directly over each one of these shifts you'll have a lieutenant that will uh, change his hours to where he's on he's supervising both those shifts on an overlap schedule so this shift will work at 6a to 6p 6p to 6a those patrol bureau lieutenants will work at a 3p to 3a so there'll be plenty of overlap um, so the lieutenant will be working half one shift and half, half and half and then you'll have a sergeant and a corporal in the evening. And then if you'll remember, we've got a new uh, position in last year's budget, a support services sergeant position that we just posted and we just promoted or just transferred uh, Sergeant uh, Dina Colson to that position. And she's gonna be, part of her job description is she's gonna be a backfill to our patrol bureau in case any of these sergeants need to be off. She'll be on backfill. So, I just hand it to the guys uh, doing more with less and trying to utilize the resources they have is um, is really where we are um, I would just caution council I feel like we're getting getting a little dangerous in in, in our span of control and uh, I really just am going to say this again I think we really need to look at pay for for everybody in the city and I know that's uh, an issue you guys have heard before but seeing some of this starting to happen is just really concerning to me when we have sergeants not wanting to take promotions um, but uh, some good has come out of it and I think we can do we can do more with less and I'm very proud of the proposal that they put together and I'd be happy to answer any questions if you wish. Um, I, um, can you give me an example of um, and no names please uh, a sergeant who's qualified to be a lieutenant and what they what their salary is and what the salary is of the lieutenant and, and the reason that and t tell me why a sergeant won't want to become a lieutenant and, 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 and use an example please but no names I, I don't know exact numbers i can tell you the grade is 18 for a mm -hmm. sergeant uh lieutenant is a grade 21 and back when the pay study was was implemented that was plenty of distance when you started a level a throughout the years those those uh, figures have become a lot closer when you get seniority with sergeants and young lieutenants being promoted or even vice versa you'll have the opposite on the opposite end but right now what we have in our department is you've got some pretty good uh, senior level sergeants that we really need in, as lieutenants and, and, our and, and, and that's what i'm thinking if you're doing away with lieutenant positions uh, maybe we need to look at the pay structure of lieutenants you need to look at the pay structure all the way but from kind of what, you, what I'm seeing here, it looks like either we're paying sergeants too much or lieutenants too less or maybe a little of both or or I don't know that it is, but there's something we need to look at here. 
I agree. I agree. Um, yeah, that, to me, these are red flags when you start seeing, uh, especially lieutenant positions come up and in an agency that's as small as PD, relatively a small agency. It's uh, those are definitely red flags. And if you read anything about budget and uh, finance, the, these kind of things, these are red. These are indicators with pay compression. You know, it, it is what it is right now. We certainly understand uh, taxes and the millage rate, and uh, you know, it, we have to work with the dollars we have with our revenues and expenditures. And uh, I think they've done an excellent job coming up with this alternative. And this is something that's been uh, with with uh, Robert and past city managers has been, hey, you guys need to try to do everything you can with what you have, and uh, basically kind of keep the lights on, so to speak. <laughs> and that's what we've been doing. And um, and I'll just give them all the credit. I mean, even last year, our number, our Portland crime numbers were down 10 and percent. They've been down 17 and percent since 2009 when the administration changed. And that's, that's huge for these guys to be doing the job they're doing with the resources they have. I can't say enough about them. Uh, that is just phenomenal work. Um, so. Cindy, uh, do you have the numbers there in front of you by chance? I'm just trying to figure out what, what is the, we have only a, we have a new officer that's listed here at 31, let's call it 32 or 31 and a half. I'm trying to see what a new corporal is, a new sergeant is, a new lieutenant is, a new captain is. We kind of need those numbers. Okay. We'll just look at, that's, that's probably a good place to start, John. Now we can see with the brand new, whatever that is, an A or whatever. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. I doubt it. I'd like to see a lot more information. See, that's what I was I'm certainly not saying this is a bad idea at all. It sounds great, especially if y'all are all behind it, but uh, it, it leaves a lot of un unanswered questions. What, what, are you, what do you need to answer? What are you trying to uh, say? Uh, like I said, why would a sergeant not want to become a lieutenant? What are, what are, what are you've got you know, you've got still making more money than sergeant. He's going from hourly to salary? Yeah. And you've got you've got sergeants that um, are not wanting to make that jump because it's not going to be enough money for them to have the extra responsibility that they're going to have. They're going to double their responsibility. They're doubling their responsibility, and they're making more money. They're not making that much more money. Yeah. If, if I could maybe help you to understand, when you have sergeants who have multiple years of service. They're not at an A, they're at the upper end of the pay scale. And when a person gets promoted, it's a 5% it's a minimum increase. So when they go from an hourly employee and now they're gonna become a salary employee and the PD, virtually all of our departments, our salary employees average 50 to 60 hours a week. And, and they're on flat south. Now, there's weeks they work a little less than that, but, but they're expected, they're the first line of callback. So when, when you get an hourly employee who it doesn't take much overtime, and he's actually taking a pay loss, working more hours on salary, and taking on much more responsibility. So our, our pay scale is so compressed, uh, and we, we run into this in the water sewer and the wastewater department, is that when they go to make that job from hourly to salary, it's not in their interest to do that. Well, it's compressed because of the years of experience. Yes, ma'am. That's what the more experience you get, the more money right. you make, right. and you don't go, you don't make a lateral move. You don't go from a Sergeant D to a Lieutenant D. That's one of the downsides so it's having not a, a good organization where you retain employees because you've got those career employees that have got 12, 15, 20 years of service in. It's not like you're moving a rookie sergeant who started out in an A, jumping him up to a 21 in an A. He may already be at an R. And so when you go to move, all he gets is that mandatory 5%. And then if you, kind of like what you said, Councilman Riggs, if you, if you take and look at that specific one or two positions and try to do some adjustments in there, it's just going to have a ripple effect. 
it's like it's similar to what some agencies do when they increase their starting pay. Garden City is increasing their starting pay right now, I think, to what was it? 16, 17 <coughs> an hour. Ours is 13 something an hour. It's hard to be competitive. But on the back heels of that, as soon as they did that with their police officer line level new employees, on the back side, they've, uh, they're going to go in there and do a compression study and make those other adjustments they need to make for their employees that have been there as far as longevity. So that you don't have a new guy coming in, you've got a six month, a two year guy that's this guy's making more money than he's got a lot less experience. But this proposal here is what we're doing. We're, we're reducing, we're taking away the two street level lieutenant's positions. We're combining the shifts, which is a really great, great idea, to be honest with you, really uh, forward thinking, and that we're trying to do everything we can to be creative and not add to the budget. This is actually saving the budget over 7,100 bucks. And it's also, um, going to carve into that need right now in our patrol bureau, which is 11, to make it 10, which is, uh, I feel like it's pretty smart. Do you have any other questions of Director Turner? Do I have really the only option we have at this point unless we want to advertise outside the agency and bring in something from that's the that's the other alternative you have we discuss that either you do the dissolve add three add your part-time secretary still saving about seven grand or you advertise outside the agency and that's that's a tough thing to do that's right we're not going to make it Yeah, and I asked two of them I knew that had interest in it because they had approached me first mm -hmm. and talked about it and then afterwards when they didn't put in, I, out of curiosity, I just asked them. That's what both of them said. And one is, a, is relatively a junior sergeant. Mm -hmm. He's only been a sergeant for about two years. Thank you. Okay, do I have a motion to approve the proposed Police Department Patrol Bureau reorganization to dissolve two patrol lieutenants and add three new patrol officers and one part-time secretary position. So moved. I move to approve. All right, so Councilman Boyum moves I'll first. I'll second Councilman Lewis is going to second. Do I have any discussion? All in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Agenda item 11, motion to approve resolution 2015-06, a resolution which states the Mayor and City Council's opposition to the initial wording of House Bill 170, the State of Georgia's Transportation Funding Act. Mr. Cheshire. Thank you, Mayor. Um, if y'all recall at the last meeting, I, I, brought, I first brought this up, and uh, actually since that meeting, the, as you expect any bill that comes out, um, there's been some language change, but we still kept this on the agenda because um, I've still got some uh, concerns and I think we need to keep them in front of our legislators. Uh, again, this House bill is a, a way of looking to fund the transportation needs of the state of Georgia. And I, I commend the legislature for being proactive on this, I really do. And the first, the, the, the latest language that I heard from the first language is an improvement in my mind. But the, uh, my concerns with the current language is they have is the, um, let me just read you this one section here. It says the current version of House Bill 170 would authorize county commissions to levy a six cents per gallon local excise tax. The revenue from the local excise tax will be split with the county and the cities within the county based on the existing local maintenance and improvement grants, which is uh, LMIG, which is the GDOT formula. Uh, it goes on to say the LMIG formula favors county roads by giving greater weight to centerline road miles over heavily traveled and congested multi-lane streets often found in employment centers in your city. So that's my biggest concern is the language in there now. It's not so much uh, the fact that the six cents a gallon, and that's still debatable as to whether that extra tax is enough to give us the money we need back. But my concern is more 
the formula that they're gonna use to distribute that additional excise tax should we as a local community decide to do that and impose that that tax. Um, so you said the distribution is gonna be based on miles, not traffic? It's, uh, it's the LMIG formula, which is which is used is primarily, it's heavily weighted on lane miles, and I think some populations in there, I'm trying to get the exact formula, I couldn't get it today, but I asked for it. Um, just to give you an example, in the current fiscal year, the city will get about $200,000 from GDOT, from the Department of Transportation for the LMIG funding, which we've been using all toward resurfacing, but you can use it for other projects as well. The county will get a little over a million, so that's just a, you know, a five to one type. Mm -hmm. And this is, I mean, the city is where, to me, your congestion, your, your road widenings, your intersection improvements, your traffic signal, uh, most in the county is primarily resurfaces, which is a good thing, don't get me wrong, it's, it's not, but just when it comes to congestion, problems I would I mean, tend to say that the city has a, a larger issue. So that's my concern is the funding, the way that they have it broken down right now. So what this says, uh, and there's several cities that have utilized this, this same template we just uh, tweaked it a little bit. It's 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 opposition to the initial language. Uh, we weren't really sure how to write it because it's changing daily. But it's just our it's our opposition, and at least from a city standpoint, and, and we want to con continue to tweak that language. And I've spoken to all the legislators, and they're you know they're open and they're doing the best they can with with it right now. And it'll be tough to make everybody happy. But right now, as you would expect, the uh, ACCG has is endorsing the bill that's written with the GMA as a potent, as you would expect. Questions? Thoughts? I'm just wondering what the school board thinks since they get, since they get two cents, not just one, like everybody else. I'm not here to opine this evening. <laughs> not here to opine. Yeah. You're wearing a casual fleece, that means no comment? No comment. <laughs> I mean, I well, I mean, the, the bottom line is county folks drive on the city roads, but most city folks don't necessarily drive out into the county. So everybody comes here to work. We, uh, we're already under the gun for, for resurfacing and increased traffic. I mean, it's just, you might have a lane, but if nobody drives on it, it's not going to wear out very fast. Yeah. So. I'm glad that they've made some tweaks to the language, but I think it needs a little more tweaking, personally. What is the, I guess, what's the reason for us to pass a resolution like this? Just to say, hey, we're against it? Yeah, you know, and it wouldn't be the worst case, the thing in the world if we didn't pass it. I mean, it, and what I would ask is that each of you continue to talk to our legislators and make that. But it's, I guess GMA likes to show that, uh, that it's been discussed in an open setting and, and that language has gotten out and I uh, commend uh, Al for the article that you wrote last time because actually as confusing as this was to me, your, your article made it, <laughs> me to understand it a little better. Uh, so it was just it was well written to me the way you wrote it. So it's, again, it's changing. I almost pulled it and didn't even leave it on here because the language has even changed from the first version. So. Um, well, I mean, so so the spot sellers can already be used for road projects, right? Yeah, absolutely. From the so this sounds kind of like this property tax deal they tried to do four years ago, where they're collecting all the property tax at the state level, and then they're going to give it back to the to the people. Right. Well, I'd rather collect it here and keep it here. No sense sending it up to Atlanta for them to get their cut. Right. They're going to they're going to take it. Now they're going to get their cut anyway, but I mean we don't have to. They're going to take it. Let them take it. Yeah. I think, I think, I think the biggest struggle is going to be in, not whether or not they're going to take that three cents, because they're going to take it, but the bigger struggle is going to be on if you choose to levy individual taxation or excise taxes to get your money back, how, what are they going to let us do between us, the county, et cetera? And I think that's where the, the fight is right now is what it sounds to me. Yeah, because that's, uh, if, if in the current version, it's six cents a gallon excise tax that we could put on there locally. So that would be in addition to what the state puts on there. So, yeah, it would be an increase that we would be fighting that battle, increasing locally. 
the English. I, I'm not opposed one way to approving it. I guess I'd leave that up to y'all whether you think it makes sense or not um, to formally do it. I don't. I don't mind at all. I was just saying you just did something. <laughs> you say it, it puts it on the GMA thing this season. But that's what it is. I mean, I think uh, we would just be one of 482, and so I don't, that are opposing this. And I said 482, but I mean, just about everybody's jumping on the bandwagon to do this. So um, whose voice will be the louder? So do I have a motion to approve resolution 2015-06? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor, please state by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. All right, consideration of a motion to award the purchase of a dump truck to freight liner of Savannah in the amount of 128589. Darren, please. Darren, do you ever get to go first? <laughs> it's sometimes good to be last. <laughs> Everybody else clear that. <laughs> uh, this uh, initially we bid it out uh, one dump truck for this current budget year. Uh, the budget for this was 165,000. We uh, sent out several vendors, advertised as usual. The uh, the low bid Freightliner Savannah had a bid of 128,589. Well, I had, we, we initially asked for a 60 day delivery time, but, but due to certain markets, the economy's turning around and those demands high, uh, most of the delivery period is dated quite past that. This one specifically, probably seven to nine months. Uh, we did have an identical dump truck budget for fiscal year 2016, I believe. Budget fit was 140. You know, we're recommending the award of the contract to freight liner at 128589 Mayor, did you want to address the second one or you want to do this one? Go ahead and address the second one at the same time there and I'll ask for a separate motion to do that. With the second one, we're recommending uh, to basically duplicate that award, freight liner, 128589 uh, for the exact same truck. Uh, the, they will not be delivered. They'll be delivered well past the new budget year coming on board. Uh, looking minimum seven, possibly nine months. So that's our recommendation. Okay. Do we have any questions for Darren? Okay, let's take item 12 first. Do I have a motion to award the purchase of a dump truck to freight liner of Savannah in the amount of $128,589? Uh, to replace the existing 1995 model in use at the transfer station. So moved. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Item 13, do I have a consideration of a motion to award the purchase of a dump truck to freight liner of Savannah in the amount of $128,589 to replace the existing 1995 model in the use for use in our street division of public works? So moved. Any discussion? All in favor, please state by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. I guess I would add that the existing trucks and use will be coming for you for surplus after we get the release. Thank you very much. Okay, agenda item 14, consideration of a motion to approve summary change order number two for the Southeast Quadrant Water and Sewer Extension the revised contract amount is a mere one million two hundred seventy-eight thousand three hundred forty-seven dollars and fifty cents, an increase of thirteen thousand seven hundred seventy-eight dollars and eighty-nine cents. Mr. Johnson. Thank you, Mayor Wayne Johnson, Director of Water and Wastewater. This is the summary change order that trues up the quantities on the Southeast Quadrant Water and Sewer Extension Parts A and B. Uh, is I point out in the memo the total of parts A and B in the that were awarded is a million two hundred thirty-six thousand five sixty-eight sixty-two. I had pre previously come before you and asked you to increase part B by twenty up to twenty-eight thousand dollars to do directional bores under uh, some property so that we didn't have to destroy trees and 
go to condemnation to try and get the easement, you approve that, which brought the total authorized amount to a million uh, 264,568.61. This is a, a unit price contract. If you look at the thing, you'll see that there are deducts and increases in there. Uh, the final contract amount is a million two seventy eight three forty seven fifty, which is an increase of thirteen thousand seven seventy eight eighty nine. The bulk of that, uh, in <coughs> complying with the understanding that we have with the property owner that gave us the bulk of the easements and the pump station site, we shifted the pump station back closer to the wetlands at his request, which necessitated increasing the height of the pump station, the pits, the vault, everything by 18 inches, which was an increase of uh, about $20. $8,000, so that's where the bulk of this comes from. If it wasn't for that, we would have actually had a deduct on this contract. The budget was $1,600,000. This will close out the actual construction contract, uh, and even with the engineering fees, and we still have some easement conditions to meet with uh, Mr. Roach uh, and the Roach property, uh, but we'll still be well underneath budget. So I would request your approval so that we can close out this construction contract, let the contractor get his retainage. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer. Anybody have any questions? When will this be completed? It is completed and online. Okay, so we're, we're approving a change and it's already been done. That's what we're yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. The, the summary change, or these are unit price contracts. Right based on an estimated quantity and you approve the budget and then as long as it's line items that either more footage or less footage or whatever then we true all that up at the end with the summary change order if we're doing things like we did on part b where we're adding something that was not a line item which was the directional bores then we come back to you and get approval on that addition ahead of time, which is that $28,000. Okay. All right. Do I have a motion to approve summary change order number two for the South Beach Quadrant Water and Sewer Extension? So moved. So, sorry, Gary, you can take that one off. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor, please state by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, agenda item 15 is other business from city council. I have a couple of things, but um, I'll hold off and let everybody else speak up if somebody has something. First, I want to recognize, can Jeff Grant come forward, please? Yeah, woke you up. Yeah. <laughs> Ty, Tyler, Jeff Grant, you want to do it? Now, just, you know, simple yeses and no's will do. I was watching the news either last night or the night before. Did I see you on the news, Mr. Grant? I wasn't on the news, yeah. Okay, I see you on the news getting the recognized top. in the first class of the first inductees into the Georgia Southern University African American Hall of Fame. Yes. Did I get that correct? Yes. Very nice. Were you the youngest inductee? Possibly. I don't think I was the youngest, but uh, possibly. He was the only Canadian. <laughs> I probably was. Yeah, probably probably. The only Canadian. So yeah. how many of y'all were inducted? Do you remember? I do not. Um, I'd say probably about 20. Okay. 20 of us, yeah. Well, I think that's a wonderful accomplishment. I just want to I didn't bring it up here, so I don't have it on me. I thought I had it in my papers, but Franklin Dismukes had asked. It was a resolution. I know you did give it to me. But then the, the DAR came in and things went crazy. Um, and we can take a second and go down and find it, but it was a resolution that basically... Um, That's to support the microbrewery, isn't it? Support the microbrewery industry. And I didn't know the city council was interested in... in 
Passing that resolution, endorsing Georgia's microbrewery industry or not, um, Eagle Brewing Company asked us if we would be interested in doing that. So I'm proposing that to council to see if there's interest in doing that. I mean, the, the, the basics of it is they're looking, they're seeking the same uh, opportunities as a Georgia winery is basically it. Being able to sell some stuff out of their store, just like a winery. I think what I'd like to do, Sue, so we'll put it in your next packet so everybody can have a chance to read it and uh, we'll bring it back up then, but just be looking for that. Uh, it's sort of, I will just tell you what he brought to us was a basically a template, which I'm assuming comes from the, probably the association that people are passing, but we'll put it in your next packet. Is there any other business from council? Well, the, the only thing I wanted to bring up, and maybe this is really for Alan or maybe even the South Main uh, committee that we have, you know, Will was expressing concern about that project on the Grady Street. I just drove by the old subway uh, on Main Street and they've taken all the bushes out and paved over every piece of greenery on that property. And so I, I think part of the problem we have, and uh, you know, Mandy says it pretty much, well, it's not normal. But if it isn't in the ordinance, then people aren't required to do it. So maybe we need to start looking at some of these architectural um, issues, especially in the downtown area. If we're looking to create character spaces in the downtown, we've got to put it in our ordinances we got to require the builders. So that way when they come in, they go to the right start meeting, they know exactly what they're going to be, be doing. Whether it's trees, whether it's greenery, whether it's brick, whether it's building, whether it's concrete, whatever the case may be. I think but Mandy, we, we need to get some architectural standards. Well, I think Mandy drew some up, have you not? Yes, ma'am. So we do have we architectural own. standards that have been drawn up based on, we just haven't brought it in front of council to, to review and to vote. That's right. I, I have prepared a draft of suggestions. So for the South Main in particular, or downtown, or is there a particular area, or is it the whole city? I did it um, with the South Main committee in mind okay. for, for that district, but that's one of the questions is what would the boundary be? Uh, would it be the TAD boundary, the DSDA boundary? You know, that, that's a point of discussion, but there is, there is a graph that is compared for consideration. Has it been vetted through South Main yet? It has been distributed to that committee uh, membership. They took several copies, which not been necessarily full discussion. Okay. But just thinking of the difficulties we were having talking about those kinds of things, and you know, we can't if it's not in the ordinance, we can't really force them to do it. You know. I'll, I'll be happy to bring that. So let's put it in the ordinance. Well, if you don't mind, prior to, why don't you email those to each council one? Okay. And take a look at that, and we can see what we'd like to do or what you guys would like to do going forward in discussing that very issue. And I think that um, the South Main Committee at some point in the next month or so um, wanted to come and make a presentation in front of council and that may be regarding some of that, but I have to ask them. Any other comments? I think they mentioned that they are in the last time. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to No, go ahead. And when they came last time, they talked about It just may be something we want to accelerate. I mean, we're getting more interest in downtown, we're getting more developers, but you know, every time a property gets redeveloped, it's lost for the next 40 years. It's however, it's that development sticking there for 30, 40 years. So um, everyone we miss is an opportunity. You know, an opportunity lost. So the sooner we can put some architectural standards on the property, the better. Thank you. Any other business from council? Okay, we'll move to agenda item 16, city manager's comments. I've got just a few, but I'll keep them brief. Uh, one is that the alcohol license application uh, for bylo number 5567 is changing managers uh, pending the background investigation, so that's just a notification to council as required as per the ordinance. Second item is an update on the Five Mile Fire District meetings. We were asked by council uh, a couple meetings ago, maybe more, on where those meetings stood. I will tell you that staff, and that would have been the public safety director and the fire chief, met with county counterparts about a month ago at that meeting, and they, they met, but I think what they realized or what they felt was that the city manager and the county manager, they would like them to attend that meeting, which we did. We had another meeting, which myself and Mr. Couch were, were there. I thought it was good. It was a good positive meeting. Um, what we're planning on doing is putting together an agenda and then 
inviting those that serve, that are asked to serve, that are elected officials, and have the next meeting. So that's progressing. You know, we've got a lot. As per, as per the agreement, we've got a while, but I think we all agree we need to make that thing happen earlier and meet earlier, and we're doing that. We're being proactive on it. So I feel pretty good about the last meeting. And um, like Wendell, uh, Public Safety Director Wend Wendell Turner and Ted Wynn, we're going to put a little bit more stuff together and then set the next meeting up. So we're making some good progress there. So I thought it was very good. Secondly, I attended the CRC, the Coastal Regional Commission meeting, board meeting last week. And um, amongst the things that the board approved, although there was some descending vote or a couple people voted against it, but they have voted to increase our annual fee by 30 cents, which is take it from a dollar to a dollar 30 per capita. So that's going to take us from about 29,000 a year to 38,000 a year. And um, I've asked the executive director, Mr. Burns, to come to a council meeting and get in front of y'all and explain that a little bit. So uh, you need to know where your money's going and you'll have the opportunity to ask any questions. Uh, and we had not set up that time, but I'm meeting with him and Ms. Cody and possibly the mayor on Thursday. And we're going to go over some things and we'll set up a date for that, a council meeting. So, um, anyway, I, that's a substantial increase and I think you ought to get the opportunity to hear what the reasoning is. And then finally, Ms. West, the finance director, needs to start talking about budget retreat dates that we need to set up. Since we're real deep in the revenue projections right now and um, the finance director does a good job of driving all that. Thank you. Um, Cindy West, finance director. Um, we do need to set a date for the budget retreat. We had it last year on April the 14th, which was a Monday. We have had them on a Thursday and a Friday. I have thrown it, I have a few Friday and Monday dates that I would like you to consider. If you wanna wait and think about it, check your calendars and come back when we actually vote on it at the next council meeting. Um, will be Friday, April the 3rd, Monday, April the 6th, Friday, April the 10th, Monday, April the 13th, or any other suggestions? Did y'all like the Monday? Did y'all like the Monday meeting, or do you like the Friday meeting? Does it make a difference? I don't want a Friday meeting. Yeah. Just toss it out there. <laughs> and that's a good, good deal. It's not the tenth of the red day. Shriver and I live in Woodlawn on Benson Drive and I want to thank City Council for denying the Benson property to be zoned commercial. You did what was best for our entire community and we really appreciate it and we hope that if any future requests for zoning that property commercial come before you that you will continue to show the integrity of this council and do what's best for the community and leave that property residential. Thank you very much. Thank you, Trevor. Any other comments? We're asked for adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. 